No. Any any luck there? Yeah, yeah that's us now there. Okay, brilliant, fantastic. Okay, so welcome everybody. Welcome everybody that is joining me on Zoom. It's lovely to have you. Um, and welcome everybody that's joining me on Facebook. For those of you that are joining me on uh, Zoom, none of your faces are available for the live stream. It's just my face. So if anybody's their camera on, um, it's you know, the only thing that people can see on Facebook is me. So just for your own privacy. Also, um, if you wanted to ask questions, use it the chat. Um, if you use your voice and, and during this time, you will hear it on Facebook. You mightn't see your face, but you'll hear your voice. Just so that we're really clear about, just so we're really clear about um, what's happening. We're streaming on the, uh, my page on Facebook. Is everybody okay with that? Well, everybody good. Love, love's good to see you. I would just like to be really transparent and uh, really upfront before we begin so we can create some sort of safety here. So welcome to um, emotional turmoil, overcoming emotional turmoil, and four very uh, particular steps to overcoming it. This is the first workshop that I have done to the public in a lifetime. And when I say public, the reason I differentiate between public and uh, professional is that I run most of the workshops that I run are for professionals. And I see a lot of our trainees, are not even trainees, um, Liz, our, uh, graduated um, professionals here. So it's lovely to have views as well. So this is the first time that I, I'm a wee bit nervous about it, to be honest. That's the, the reality of it. I haven't done it for a, a, an age and I'm a wee bit nervous and a wee bit jittery about it, which is really interesting in itself. And I've been asking myself all sorts of questions about that, but anyway. Um, so what, for those of it, See, for those of you that are joining me, that are new to me, go and let me know, um, especially in Zoom, go and let me know with a wee thumbs up. I see so many familiar faces, but I see so many new people as well. So for you, those of you that are new, just let me know a wee heart or a wee thumbs up will be really good. I don't want to waste your time, but I do want to make some small introductions. I'm sure that, um, thanks, Francis, that's brilliant. It's good to see. Great, great, Linda. Um, I don't want to spend too much of your time under just me, especially for those those guys that, that have been around me for a while. Um, but I, my name's Shauna Quigley, and I'm sure you've done your due diligence before you would come to this workshop. I'm sure you've maybe done a wee bit of Googling and a wee, a wee bit of checking. But I am the uh, creator of a method called the Clearing Method. And the Clearing Method is an all-encompassing method. It's a psychotherapeutic tool, body-centered psychotherapeutic tool. I know that's a bit of a mouthful. But um, that method has been, we've been in practice for a few years with that method and some absolutely transformational outcomes. Um, we are in the process of having those outcomes uh, qualified um, and in the process of having uh, some the university look at the outcomes. So um, we also have a, an online school and then we teach this method to all our therapists. So I'm not coming at this emotional turmoil business from a newbie point of view. It's very well researched um, and it's very well practiced and there's thousands of clinical hours. Also, what's really important to say if you're new to me is that I have charted all of this journey myself. So this isn't just a theoretical model. It's actually um, an integrated model in that I have under come to understand this material myself. I'm not going to go into that too much tonight because I don't think that's what you're here for. But I do want you to feel um, comfortable with the knowledge, comfortable with the knowledge that, that has been researched and, um, and that there's lots of people out there that have testimonials to this material working. The other thing is, if you wanted a wee bit more information on me, there's an entire TED talk on how this information all came about. You can go and have a look at that. I'm not going to talk about it now because this isn't about me. It's about you. So without further ado, we're going to just fold into the promise of this. So what is the promise? The promise is that you're going to walk away from this with a detailed understanding of your why. So not a theoretical understanding, a detailed understanding of why you might be in emotional turmoil or experiencing emotional turmoil. So I am going to give you theory, but what I'm going to do with that theory is I'm going to punctuate it with questions. So those questions, I am hoping that you will apply to yourself. 
So we will work through um, the first, the first and second principle tonight. There's four principles. We'll work through the first and second principle tonight, and I'm going to ask you some specific questions. Now, whether or not you want to apply those questions to yourself is entirely up to you, but I would encourage you to do so. Um, as I give the theory and as I ask the questions, I'm going to show you the questions and show you the detail of the questions. And it's up to you to write those down. But what's most important here is that you keep yourself safe. OK, you keep yourself regulated. You keep yourself inside your window of tolerance. All right. And that if this is too much to apply to yourself, then sit back and, and listen to the theory. But you know, anybody that has worked with me or works with me in the training will know that safety is first priority, priority any aha moments. So keep yourself safe. Keep your, it's not a generic program. It's designed to be specific. So um, at the end of it, you will have a very detailed understanding after the three nights, a very detailed understanding of why you particularly are experiencing emotional turmoil. And also you'll have a very detailed plan of how to get out of it. Is that okay? So that's my my intention and my promise to use. Um, and that's what I'm hoping to take you through. Is anybody, any questions about that? Anybody, any questions whatsoever? Stick it in the chat for me. I see loads in the chat. Was that just the hearts? That was hearts. Leona, everybody okay on Facebook? Yeah. Yeah, everybody's All fine. good. All good. I'm particularly looking at Jill, Kira, Lou, and Fiona. Um, and I can see you three particularly. So if there's anything goes wrong with the screen, anything goes wrong with a uh, share, anything goes wrong with the material, will you let me know? Because you have you using me eye, me eye line. It's like you three or you four are sitting at the front of the class. Everybody else is well behind you. Can I see anybody else could just see you four? So if you keep me, if you keep me right, that'll be brilliant. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at emotional turmoil as an experience and try to break it down a wee bit. So what does emotional turmoil mean? And I'm sure it means something different for everybody. And I'm sure it's a different experience. Well, I know it's a different experience for each and every one of us individually. But let's look at the experience of emotional turmoil um, as a totality of an experience and see if we can get some understanding on it. So when a, an emotion is birthed in the body, if that emotion is in conscious awareness, if that feeling, if that experience is in conscious awareness, if we're aware of it, if we come into contact with it, there is a plethora of responses that come, can come, not always, but can come from that one experience in the body. And there are so many factors at play. But let's just look at the the different experiences that come from the emotional um the emotional response in the body okay so the first one can be nervous system activation so it can be how your nervous system responds so what does your nervous system do with emotion now note that i'm using the word emotion I'm not talking about a specific emotion. I'm just using a generic term for emotion here, right? I'm not getting under the specifics yet. But when a difficult emotion births in the body, what we understand is that there can be a nervous system activation. Now let's let's break that nervous system activation. Now, what does that mean? You know, do you get fight? Do you get flight? Do you get flee? Do you get shut down? Can can you answer that in yourself now? Do, does your body respond? Does your nervous system respond to, to the emotion in your body? Yeah, so that's just ask, reflect on that. If you have a pen and paper handy, that would be brilliant. Anybody on Facebook, just reflect on that if you can. How does your nervous system respond to that that is in your body? The next thing is, what's your defense mechanisms do? because we have this nervous system activation which in and of itself can be an explosive experience because nervous system activation in its entirety will add so much more material to the emotional content that's already there 
So now we're introducing another concept, which is the defense mechanisms. What are your defense mechanisms? Do you know them? Do you know what they are? Mine's a sublimation. So I'll automatically go right away to try and make something better, to try and find something good, to try and regulate, to try and get out of it. So now you were talking about a response in the body on top of the emotion. Some of our, some of us are denial. Some of, some of us is repression. Do we move on the learned helplessness? Now, even just in these early stages, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to step out the component parts of emotional turmoil. We have the emotion itself. We have the response in the nervous system, which will have a lot of physical attribute states. Yeah. And now we're, I'm asking, what's the nervous system? What's the defense mechanism like? What's the behaviors like? What do you feel compelled to do? What, what is your natural, normal response to the emotion within? Do you know it? Are you familiar with it? Is it denial? Is it defense? Is it, is it re repression? Is it shut down? Is it trying to make it all better? Because when we are understanding these component parts, we're starting to understand the experience of turmoil because this is added to the emotion that's already in. Now, if we take that a wee bit wider, if we're adding this level of experience in the body, then we're going to start to feel it not only emotionally, physically, but we're going to experience it somatically. When you carry emotion and all of this is going on, where does it get locked? And what part of your body does it get locked in? Mine is all upper. Where would yours be? Where is your somatic tension? I have clients with somatic pain, trapped pain in their arms, trapped pain in their back, trapped pain in their... And, and what I'm trying to, trying to help you see is the totality of the experience. Rash, brilliant Fiona, rationalization, helplessness, fight, flight, shutdown, loss of control in my head. I mean, that's just perfect. I know it's not a perfect experience, but it's just so wonderful to be able to understand the component parts of that. So your defense is to rationalize it. You go on the learned helplessness, you go on the fight or flight, avoidance from Facebook, brilliant shutdown and loss of control. That is what emotional turmoil is. But what we're starting to understand is the component parts of it, the defense, the nervous system, the somatics. These are all component parts of emotional turmoil. So whenever this emotion is activated or any emotion that is difficult, where do you feel that physically? What's the pattern of that emotional content? Where does it sit in your body? If you can even feel it in your body, where does it sit? How do you know it? So that's emotional content is different from the somatic content. And then the responses that you have, the, re the responses to your nervous system, it'll just flood you then with in your chest brilliantly. So then you're, now we're starting to understand the totality of the experience. We're not fully there yet but we're beginning to understand the totality of the experience. It's emotional, it's physical, it's somatic. There's nervous system activation in it. There's a defense system in it. Then there's old, old patterns of behaviors that aren't linked to the defense system. And I'm not gonna to get too technical on you, but your mind, your fundamental mind's job is to source the pain and solve the pain. It does it without you even having to think about it. It's like a breathing mechanism. It sources the pain, emotional pain, and solves it. It's been doing that for years. So alongside your defense mechanism, your natural defense mechanism, your mind has ideas about what you should be doing with this pain. Does that make sense? So alongside those ideas of what you should be doing, about, then you have more action. So you have a lot of conflict and information here, don't you? And don't you love it when people just say, just feel your feelings, they won't hurt you. 
uh-huh. I don't think so. I don't think that's the rational answer here, which is why we're taking great depths at understanding that that is within. Yeah. So this isn't a quick, this isn't some sort of quick fix. This isn't some sort of something that you can just snap out of, something that you can just turn away from, something that you can just turn off. When we understand the component parts of turmoil, then we can begin to unshame ourselves. Then we can begin to understand what the hell is happening here. We can begin to understand why it is so difficult for you and why it's not a matter of just being mindful, why it's not a matter of just breathing, why it's not a matter. Yes, take days to regulate and think rationally. Look at the truth of that. When old patterns kick in, it takes days to regulate and think rationally. Look at the truth of that. I love that as a truth. And that's the reality. So we're understanding the component parts of, of emotional turmoil. We have the emotion in of, of itself. And see that emotion that's in and of itself, that is a principle, on, a principle in itself that we will come and look at at another time, right? We'll come and look at it in the process of these three days. So we have that emotion and the weight of that, the somatics of that, the pain of that, the, the, the detail of that. Then what we have is the response to that. The resistance to that, the nervous system activation to that, the defenses to that, the old patterns, the old, the old structures in the mind, the old neural pathways that have, have been your, your go-to for years. Whether that's eaten, and if there's anybody here that eats to soothe, whether that's eaten, whether that's drinking, whether that's exercise, it doesn't matter what it is. Adaptive mal, it doesn't matter what it is. Then there's the pattern that you can get trapped under and your mind can push you under all whilst you're experiencing this emotional pain. Yeah? Is everybody with me? And, and is anybody beginning to understand the depth that is within emotional pain? Now, I know that you're probably thinking, yeah, well, where's the solution? The solution is coming. The answer is coming. But I want that he have a frank conversation about what it is to be in emotional turmoil and why we're in emotional turmoil and what is exactly happening within us. And I want that he have a conversation about how, how natural and normal it is and how universal it is. And so if you can take two seconds and just look at the chat, even if you haven't been on the chat, just take two seconds and look at the chat and look what some of the people in this um, in this challenge is sharing. Because I think when you see others, then you find commonality and you find a wee bit of, a wee bit of ease in yourself. Okay, so sometimes for us, we can have lots of memories as well, the flood on. Lots of memories that flood on the emotional turmoil, lots of memories of the past, lots of projections for the future. We can have, so it's a, it's a, it's a multifaceted experience of emotional turmoil. Yeah. Does that feel, let me know in the chat if that feels like a good enough explanation or a good enough, not explanation, a good enough description the inability to think clearly, let's add that to it, yes. And that'll be a part, sometimes it's a part of the nervous system activation. The other thing that'll happen in emotional turmoil as well is that the, the body will be in such difficulty that the mind's only job will be to pay, pay attention to what's happening within the body. And when the mind is in such difficulty uh, or when the body is in such difficulty, the mind will not do anything else other than attend to the thing that is most pressing in this moment. Does that make sense? So we have all of that, not able to think clearly, not able to manage, not able to do anything else outside of our awareness, just be in this turmoil and hope that it passes. Let me know in the chat or in the thumbs up or in any hearts, if that is if that resonates and that's your experience as well. It's your general experience of turmoil. Okay, brilliant, Emer. Brilliant. All right, fantastic. Great stuff. It it un unfortunately brilliant, Joanna. Brilliant. Unfortunately, it is it is the experience, the human experience. So it is, yes, awful. I know, I know. Great. Okay, 
So what we're going to try and do now, okay, is that we're going to try and understand the component parts of that experience. Now, I have laid out nervous system activation, but we're not going to get onto that. We're going to begin by understanding your levels of what I call unity, your levels of psychosomatic unity. Now, anybody in the anxiety and panic course will be rolling their eyes at this moment in time. Lou. <laughs> psychosomatic unity. What the hell? And what is that? So let's start there first, because that's our first question. If we don't have unity, if we don't have what I call psychosomatic unity, mind-body unity, right? We'll call it mind-body unity for the purpose of this challenge. If we don't have unity, then we can end up in turmoil. We can end up in action out of turmoil before we know it. How many of these are in that place? How many of these are spiraling? and you have no idea how or why, and you have no connection to what is happening in your body. Now we're coming to that in a wee minute. That is what this unity is. When we don't know, we have no foresight, we don't see, and it just happens. So unity is our ability. Psychosomatic unity is our ability for our minds to understand what is happening in our body. And this is your first, this is your first principle. So psychosomatic unity. I want you by the end of today to understand your levels of psychosomatic unity. So psychosomatic unity, mind body unity is how much are my mind and body connected? How, how unified am I with my body? Okay, so there's lots of facets in this. There's lots of parts of this that we need to understand. Your levels of unity will absolutely depend on how well you were co-regulated as a child. So how was your emotional world cared for as a child? You let me know in the chat. Was it treated with kindness, compassion, caring? How was your levels of emotion, how was your emotion treated as a child? Okay, it was treated with anger. It wasn't treated at all. Brilliant, brilliant, Emma. So it was treated with anger or wasn't treated at all. It was repressed, brilliant, squashed. Lou, we compassion and hoax. We shame, it wasn't treated at all, it was ignored. It was treated with shame. It was treated with pain. You had them. You, they were dismissed. You weren't allowed to have them. So your levels of unity, your capacity, unless you've done an awful lot of work, they were ignored, dismissed and minimized. They were dismissed, yeah. So when, as children, when we have these levels of disunity showing this, so if, if, if the caregiver in our lives are shutting out our emotional world or shaming our emotional world or minimizing or, or hurting our emotional world, then what tends to happen is that we tend to make a decision, an unconscious decision to check out of the body, to not connect to that that is within. Why would we? It's too unsafe. Suppressed, brilliant. Why would we connect to that that is within? If we don't know how to read it, if we don't know how to walk, if we don't know how to soothe it, if we don't know how to look after it, it then seems very sensible that we would disconnect from our bodies. And if we're disconnected, if we're not in unity, then it's a safer place to be. So if we're not in unity, if we don't understand what's happening, then it takes these huge wake up calls. It takes these huge emotional outbursts to get our attention. 
And when we get these big emotions in the body that we don't understand how to regulate, understand how to work with, then we get these massive nervous system activations. We get the defense mechanism. We get everything that we talked about happens in two seconds. So your levels of co-regulation as a child are directly linked to the level of emotional turmoil that you're experiencing now, unless you've done some work unless you've done some regulation work, unless you've done some deep diving. So the question we're going to come to, and we're going to, we're going to understand your levels of unity, are you completely disconnected from your body? Or have you some levels of unity? I'm going to put a graphic up now and you're going to check where you are, all right? So do you have some levels of unity? Freeze, shut down, resonate so much. Yes, Michelle. So freeze and shutdown are your nervous system responding to your emotional world. So where you're connected, where your mind is connected to the emotion and freeze and shutdown follows because your nervous system is responding to that that is within. And we understand why we disconnect. We understand why for a lot of us, it's just too painful to be in the body. So it's better to be in the head. How many of us, yeah? How many of us are inside our heads on a permanent basis wanting to remain safe here, thinking it through, making it logical? Now, I understand that's a defense as well, but for a lot of us that are disunified, we stay in our heads. A lot of us that are disunified, we use our minds to work it out. A lot of us that are disunified, that have, that have no safety in the body, that have no sense of sovereignty or agency in the body, because it's never been mimicked, never been shown, will stay in their heads. If you stay in your head, then you can't drop onto the body to heal and you're locked out of healing. And what happens when you're disunified is you tend to get these big emotional experiences that you've no idea where they came from because you weren't connected to any of the signals in your body that were showing you where to go. Yes, we fix other problems so we feel better. Yes, others problems. Yes, and that's if we're in a therapeutic place. And from Facebook, disconnect, disconnected and a mask on. Yeah, and medicate. We medicate in that place. For sure, of course we medicate. How could you not medicate? So that's the first thing that I want you to ask, do you understand when we talk about disunity? Am I completely disunified? Am I living in my head? Am I living away from my body? Is it easier to be up in my head because I don't know how to manage this body? I don't know how to be in it. I don't know where to be. But yet when my body roars and screams because it eventually will, when it asks, when it has any emotional difficulty, do I break down, do I fall, does the turmoil too much? That's a lot of people's experience of disunity because of emotional dysregulation. But let's look at the, the, the kind of this middle piece. And this piece I call this ease. Yeah. This ease and resistance. Yes, Claire, panic attacks. Panic attacks is your, your nervous system's response to that, which is incredible. So that that is within this emotional content. So let's look at this ease, yeah? This is the second principle of inside unity. Some of us have unity, so we're connected to our bodies. We're not completely disconnected. We're not out all together. Some of us have unity, but we have unity with huge resistance. We hate what's down there. We're afraid of what's in there. We don't like what's in there. We shame what's in there. We blame what's in there. And when I say what's in there, I mean in the body. So some of us have resistance, this ease, not this ease as in the DSM, as in, as in generalized anxiety or any of that rubbish, this ease. I, I, I am not eased by this emotion. So how many here would say they have dis-ease? They're not in disunity, but they have dis-ease about their body. They don't like it. They're not familiar with it. They don't want it. They're resistant to it. One of my favorite quotes, and I have no idea who ever wrote it, but one of my favorite quotes in the world is, 
when we are resistant of something, it goes to the basement, they lift weights. When we are resistant of emotions, they get stronger, more powerful. Disease, the disease of emotion adds another layer to emotional turmoil. Are we starting to understand this? The dis-ease of emotion, the dislike, the resistance of emotion creates. So if you think about a big mixing pot, right? With the emotion in it, the original emotion in it. If you think about that, you think about dropping and your your defense mechanisms, you think about the physicality of the emotion, you think about the somatics of the emotion. Now, if you think about if you think about how you resist emotion and, and the not wanting it and the dislike of it, then what happens is you are adding more emotional weight. And now we're starting to really understand turmoil. We're now just starting to really understand the component parts. So how many people here are in dis-ease of their emotional world? Yes. Emotions are scary for most people. They are absolutely scary for most people. And there's a great reason for that. There's a great reason that they're scary because we've never been co-regulated. We've never been taught. We've never been educated. We've never known how to manage them. So there's a question from Facebook. How do you know if you're in your head or in your body? Can you feel it? Can, can you feel that that is within? Can you name your emotion? Can you name your pain? Now, there's a wee exercise that I'm going to get you to do in a minute, and I'll, I'll pull that up in a wee minute. So what we're starting to see now is, am I completely disunified? Do I have no unity whatsoever? Do I have some unity? Am I able to be in my body and name my emotions, but I have dis-ease around them? I have shame around them, blame around them, I have something. So to like them, and there's another narrative. Or am I at a trauma response? Do I have a trauma response from that that is within my body? Now, this is the first share. So I'm going to show it to you on a scale, and you can see it. Leona, will you let me know if everybody can, if you can see that on Facebook, that would be brilliant, Leona, if you let me know. Yeah, sure. So what we've got here is we have got, we started out with dis-ease. We're talking about fluidity. What's your levels? If you know fluidity or full fluidity, dis-ease or trauma response. So are you not there at all? Absolutely not in your body at all. Have you levels of disease, dis-ease, but you don't go to trauma. You don't go to pain or panic. You don't go to anxiety. You don't go to disassociation. And hopefully everybody's familiar with disassociation. Disassociation is shutting down, not being able to feel anything, shutting out. People have described it as, brilliantly, I want to thank you. People have described it as feeling like um, they are hopeless, helpless in a black hole. So my question to you here is where are you, where do you sit on the unity scale? Because where you sit on the unity scale will have a direct correlation to the amount of emotional turmoil that you feel. Now, this is the simplest, beautifulest wee diagram. You'll have seen this loads of times if you've done it, worked in any of my programs. Um, this is what we call the feelings wheel. And the feelings wheel is a brilliant way of, for that uh, question on Facebook, how do I know if I'm in my body or how do I know if I'm in my head? This is just a beautiful wee wheel that helps us feel where maybe joy might feel in our bodies, where peacefulness might feel in our bodies. But we're not intellectualizing joy or we're not intellectual peacefulness. We're asking, we're unifying, we're asking, where does it feel in the body? Now, note that I went to the more um, acceptable to the mind feelings, peaceful, powerful, joyful, just so that we could drop under the body. Which one is up, Rita? Is the feelings wheel, is the feelings wheel not up there? No? Okay. I wonder what this is. 
What do we see? Can you see it now? What do we see? No, you just see me. Okay, what do we see? We'll try and get it up because it's a great wee. Um... No. You see it now? Yeah, good, <laughs> good, 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 good. Facebook, see that? Brilliant, okay. That's it, brilliant, Leona, thank you. So this is a great wee tool just for you to assess whether you're in your body or not. So if we're talking about unity and we're talking about what levels of unity do I have, am I completely out of all of that? Have I never felt that? Can I name where that is in my body? Again, this isn't an intellectual conversation. This is an experience in the body. Where do I feel joy? Where do I feel power? Where do I feel peace? So you can do that for sadness and anger and fear. Now we're just at the very, very, very top level here. It's very important, right? So my question is how, how capable are you at feeling that and connecting to that feeling in your body? without turmoil. And the reason that all of us are here is because we can't. That we may be able to connect to peace. We may be able to connect to joy. We may begin to be able to connect to some power, maybe, without resistance, with unity, without a trauma response. But the so-called bad emotions, we're not able to connect to those without this turmoil. Now, some people have had such a difficult experience, even with power, that they won't be able to experience power without disunity or power without disease or power without trauma response. Joy is the same. I have seen a lot of people that get fear and excitement thematically crossed over. So where they would feel excitement, they would go on the panic around excitement for the fear that that would take them there. So what we're starting to ask ourselves here from this feeling wheel is how unified am I? And am I totally disunified or have I got some fluidity here? Yeah, where am I? This is an incredibly important question because your levels of unity lead directly to your levels of overwhelm. There is a severe correlation, connection, between the levels of disunity and the levels of tur turmoil. Is everybody happy enough with that explanation and why unity is the first principle? And understanding unity is in a really incredible principle. So, Let's begin there with, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to pull up a, a set of questions. If you just copy the, this is test, what we call test one. There are four parts to test one, A, B, C, and D. So all that you need to do is replicate what I'm going to put on the screen on your paper, pieces of paper. And I'm going to ask you direct questions and you're going to just write on A, B, C, or D, right? So let me share the screen and hopefully... Go. Hopefully it looks a bit better this time. It's really simple. It's not. I just want to give you a visual reference for it, so you know what you're writing on your on your pages. Everybody see that? Yeah. So all that you do on your own page is write down yes, tick. Yes for A, yes for B, yes for C, yes for D. No for A, yes for B, yes for C, no for D. 
So when I ask the questions, it's a yes or no answer. Simple as, okay? And it should all make sense given the theory that we've just followed. Everybody with me? Yeah? So test A, part A, or test one, part A. Are you locked out of all difficult emotion? Can you feel, do you go near, do you cut yourself off from all of the difficult emotion? Have you, have you deliberately disconnected from that, those difficult feelings, whatever you deem difficult, whether that's good or bad, it doesn't matter, whether that's joy, have you disconnected from your body? Have you disconnected from the feelings that are in are within? Yes or no? Part B. Do you have, can you feel certain emotions? Can you feel certain emotions, but feel them with resistance, feel them with shame, feel them with blame, feel them with a narrative. Yeah. So have you got some unity and experience a secondary emotion to that emotion? which is exactly what resistance is. Resistance is feelings about your feelings. Yeah. Resistance is a narrative about your feelings. Not, resistance is a story, a threat about your feelings. So part B. Part C. Yeah. Part C. Do you have unity? But the disease is so great that your nervous system is activated to panic, anxiety, or disassociation. Do you have unity? Can you feel the feelings in your body? But the disease, the difficulty of those emotions are so great that you go to panic, shut down or anxiety. Yeah. Question D, part D. Yeah. Everybody follow me, everybody okay? It's simple enough, isn't it? So part D, the Holy Land. Do you have full fluidity? Can you feel are you connected? Can you feel without resistance? Can you feel and regulate quickly within a few minutes? Can you feel the depth of the emotion within? Allow it to rise, allow it to fall and regulate from that quite quickly whilst remaining connected to your task environment or yourself. The Holy Land. Note that I say that that is the optimum experience. It's not not to feel. It's to feel with fluidity. It's to feel with regulation. It's to feel with control. It's not not to feel. So do you feel with fluidity, fluidity of emotional content that rises and falls, your mind is connected to the body, the body is connected to the mind, the, the emotion rises and falls within you and then moves to regulation whilst remaining in contact with everything else around you. And that's every emotion. So yes, to A, yes to B, yes to C, yes to D, or yet no to some and yes to some. How many of you got 
a mixture of yeses and nos. Now, if, if, we, if we're understanding the content, you should have got a mixture of yeses and nos. Yeah, is that right, Lou? Yeah. Did you get the um, B and C is yes and A and, A and D is nos? The other way. So here. I ended it with B, A and B is yes, C is no and D is yes. Wow, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Fantastic. So you're you're in connection, you're not in disconnection. No, because I do brown, I do focus. Brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. Well done. Great stuff. So now we're beginning to see this. Brilliant. Fantastic. Really important questions. Did anybody did anybody see you can use the chat below? Liz, how was that for you coming from coming from all your training? How helpful was that? Sorry, do you mean me, Shauna? Yes, starting. Yeah, really good. Um, really helpful just um, to go back to the, the core, um, you know, foundations and apply them to myself, as you know. Um, yeah. Really good. Yeah. So where did you answer yesterday? Okay, I'm going to be honest, and I got a little bit down a rabbit hole with my own process there. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Isn't that the truth of this stuff? What we do go down a rabbit hole. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. But it was a mix. Yes. Yeah, mix as well. Brilliant. Okay, fantastic. The reason for, you know, allowing the vocal people to be vocal here is that it gives us all an idea where we all are. No matter the level of training, no matter the level of work, no matter the doesn't matter you know I would like to say at this stage that I am pretty fluid I am connected but pretty fluid yeah I that I would like to say that I'm there get me on a get me on a difficult day when I'm trying to juggle a hundred things maybe I'm not so fluid maybe I'm in disease yeah maybe I'm not so regulatory maybe I'm in disease Maybe I'm in resistance. Get me on a day when I'm trying to do a hundred and things and I'm tired. And maybe the, there's all sorts of stuff happening outside. So we're taking a snapshot of where we are just so that we understand our levels of fluidity. Does that make sense to everybody? Now, at the end of the three days, I will, we will then do a complete and utter review of all the answers. And I'll let you know where you are and let you know from those answers what the right course of action is. Is that happy enough? Is everybody happy enough for that? So at the minute now, what we've got, right, is we've got a clear understanding of what levels of unity. We might have even had a peek on the way we've so disunified, right? What our levels of co-regulation were like. We've, we've an understanding of our levels of unity, whether they're in fl full fluidity, no fluidity, disease, or in any trauma response. But what we really want to peek on the, is why. Why? Now we started to open that bonnet, if you like, and have a wee look underneath. But why? Why would that happen to us? Not just the, the co-regulation story is part of the story, but why? Why if you've answered, for example, yes to B, and why if you've answered yes to C, you get activated to a level of panic? or that you have such levels of distress around emotion. Why? Why would that be a, a part of your experience? And this is the second principle that I'm going to introduce. So I'm only going to introduce it and give you room for thought of it. And then what we're going to do is assess it tomorrow night. Is that okay? So I want you to understand why you might be in disunity why you have decided this body is not safe, why you are in dis-ease with that that is within, why you have a trauma response to that that is within. And this is a principle, principle two. This is principle that we call wrapping. Now, nobody roll their eyes. Anybody has been around me long enough, don't be rolling your eyes, Brita. I can see you, right? <laughs> wrapping. What the hell is wrapping? Wrapping is a very, very, very important part of the clearing method. And 
such is my understanding and um, homage to wrapping that nothing, there's no amount of work that can be done without unwrapping. So let me introduce the principle of wrapping. When we're not co-regulated, when we're not shown how to be with them, when it's not facilitated, when it's not understood, when it's not helped, we do what was done. I'm going to say that again, right? We do what was done. Our parents may be long gone from parenting, but how we were regulated, how we were taught to regulate it within our, and, and if we didn't have parents and our caregivers, remains part of our internal process. How our culture has taught us to treat these emotions remains part of our internal process. So this isn't the voice of anyone else bar us. And this is what wrapping is. Wrapping is our understanding of what we now have taken on and what we now believe about that emotional content that is within. Now let us break that down another wee bit, right? It's not just understanding, it's feeling. How do we feel about those feelings in our body? What do we think those feelings represent in us? These are massive questions. And often ones that are seldomly understood, seldomly worked at, seldomly opened up. And they sit in our subconscious minds, playing havoc in our bodies, telling ourselves to stay out, telling ourselves to stay away. How do we feel about our feelings? How do we treat our feelings? What do we believe our feelings will do to us? What do we believe our feelings mean to others? Do you see what I'm, do you see why wrapping is the, is the key word here? We wrap our feelings in stories. We wrap them in a narrative. We wrap them in feelings. We wrap them in projections about what other people think about them. We wrap them in, in meaning. And that meaning is often not pretty. That detail, that understanding is often in and of itself catastrophic, apocalyptic, shameful, hurtful, painful. There's no one else saying anything else. It's our internalized response to the emotional content within. Now I'm going to add one more piece of the puzzle when we talk about rapping. Experience. If you've had the experience some very dark, difficult emotions as a child, then that experience of that emotion will be overwhelming, too big, too much, too difficult. So this isn't just a narrative, this is experience. All of that material sits around our emotional world chatting away unconsciously. And that emotional material creates, unbeknownst to ourselves, the nervous system activation, creates the defense, creates the stuff that we talked about at the beginning, creates the turmoil. The emotion at the heart of it seldomly does the damage. It is the totality of the experience in wrapping 
They just most of the damage. Is everyone seeing and understanding that? I'm going to show you a graphic, right? And we're going to take one sample explanation. Now, all I'm doing today is introducing you to the topic of it, okay? I'm just introducing you to the topic so that you can begin to examine your own narratives, your own stories about the emotional content within. But we're going to assess it tomorrow night. All I'm doing is simply introducing it. So let me pull up the um, let me pull up the documents and see, and we'll have a conversation. Is this resonating? Your chat has dried up. So if the the chat has dried up. It's either because these are deep in process or it's not resonating at all. How can you be comfortable with the uncomfortable body sensations? I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. It's resonating. Good. I'm delighted it's resonating. And, and how can you be comfortable with the uncomfortable body sensations? You strip away wrapping. Once you strip away wrapping, you can sit in anything because it's the wrapping that creates the noise. It's the wrapping that creates a lot of the turmoil. Brilliant. Lou, you got your message. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you're all right. Um, Okay, so let's have a wee look, a wee example. Please tell me that. Breda, can you see that? Everybody see that wrapping? Yeah? Oh, good. Brilliant, Leona. Fantastic. Good, Sharon. Deep in process. I'm delighted. Delighted that you're deep in process. Good. Okay, so let's look at this. So, <coughs> I, I, if I, if I was feeling anger as a child, as an example, and I expressed that anger, yeah. I express that anger in my environment. And in that expression of anger, that anger was met, met with, if it was met with disgust, if it was met with dislike, if it was met with punishment, if it was met with dis-ease then the only thing that I am likely to do, not the only thing, one of the things that I am likely to do is I'm likely to be ashamed of that anger within. I'm likely to be ashamed of the anger that I'm feeling. Is everybody following that? And that shame comes as a direct response to how that anger was seen in me, how it was treated in me, how it was processed in me. Yeah. So the anger becomes shameful to me. Anger is bad, is the message. Anger is wrong. Now we're starting to see the first layer of wrapping. Yeah. Shame. I am bad for anger. I am bad. I am wrong. There's something fundamentally. Remember the difference between shame and, and blame. Shame is I am. Blame is I've done. Everybody okay with that? So anger is the primary emotion experienced as a child not regulated in the home because of a lack of understanding. And so we shame ourselves for that anger. We, we hold ourselves in contempt for that anger. We have a big, I am, I am wrong, I am bad. Now we not only have anger, we have I am statements, core, core understandings of ourselves. I am bad, I am wrong. Now, in that anger, if we've acted out in any way, done something wrong in any way, 
that has just been dysregulated and shown to us that we're wrong. Now we're to blame. I've done wrong. I kicked the door. I kicked the wall. I broke the whatever. I smashed it. Now not only am I wrong, I've done wrong. This is the type of human being I am. I am wrong. I am bad. And when I'm bad, and when I do wrong things, then I lose connection. I lose love. I lose connection. And if it's love, if I lose connection, then my nervous system will be severely activated from that loss. There will be deep fear. Everybody with me? Yeah? Everybody following still? So what we're looking at here is an, an actual practical examination of wrapping. Now, I ask you to go into your body and feel anger. You're not going to feel anger in and of itself. You're going to feel a multi-layered experience of anger that has nothing to do with anger. This is one of the biggest misconceptions about feeling your feelings. If your feeling is wrapped, then it is not as easy just to be in the heart of anger and be okay. This is one of the biggest misconceptions around, I mean, I. I this drives me bananas, but this is one of the biggest misconceptions around it's good to talk. If somebody goes to talk and they have to talk about anger, this isn't good to talk. This is petrifying. This is life-endingly petrifying to try and deal with the anger that's within me. If I get in the anger and I get in the shame and blame and loss and fear, what would the emotional turmoil of anger look like for that person? What might you see on the outside? What levels of nervous system activation? What levels of defense? What behaviors? What you might have, you might have here, you think about all of the beginnings, you see that, Lou, you see the complexity of this now? And so the answer is not just simply go and feel your feelings go and titrate. I mean, if it was that simple, we would all do it. We'd all have done it so a long ago because the information is all out there. How to be more mindful of anger. And, and, and you know, this might be difficult hearing for a lot of people, but it's true. That's bullshit. If that feeling is wrapped in any way. Now, this is quite an extensive wrapping, but I've seen worse. If that feeling is wrapped in any way, you have a hope in hell of beautifully titrating towards it, unless that wrapping stripped. And to answer the Facebook question, that's how we feel our feelings with ease. Does anger ever feel easy? No, but it'll feel easier without the wrapping. You'll be able to feel it in its entirety and see its source and see where it came from and see why it's there when all of the rest of it's gone because the rest of it is an imposed understanding of what anger is. How are you feeling about seeing that? Does that make sense? And is this starting to explain? Can't ever, yes, exactly, Michelle. You can't ever access anger without a overwhelming fear. You go near anger, you're going to get fear. You're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to get, there's where turmoil is. There's, the, there's what happens in turmoil. There's why we get these huge defenses. There's why we're not in our body. There's why we're disunified. There's the resistance. Now, that's not in every emotion, right? It's not on every emotion, but it's on all the big ones. And who do we blame for this? Ourselves. Because some of the stuff that we're listening to is just be within, just drop in, titrate within, breathe as you're through it. You couldn't breathe through that if you tried. Your nervous system wouldn't let you. Your defense mechanisms wouldn't let you. They're there to keep you safe. 
So if anybody gets it shut down here, now you're starting to understand why. My fault, I would have never have healed, not in a lifetime, if I hadn't unwrapped that. My core feeling was a nothingness. My core experience was a nothingness. Good, Lou. <laughs> Good. Yay. I'm delighted. The penny has dropped. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. That was worth it. You see, if that's all I get out of these three days, I'll take that. Penny has dropped. Yes. Let me explain a wee bit about my own process here. So at the heart of my process was this nothingness. Yeah. That nothingness, I was sure was a sickness. So we have nothingness at its heart, sickness around it. Sickness meant madness. Now we have madness. Yeah, everybody with me? Madness now means loss. Lose everything. Fear. Nervous system activation. If I went near nothing, this what was going to be my experience? Full out disassociation. Is everybody with me? If I went near nothingness, it, look, the best therapist in the world couldn't have took me to nothingness. My body wouldn't let me end it. The sense of turmoil around it was too big, too much. The only way into nothingness was to strip away all of the meanings, all of the language, all of the feelings about the nothingness. All of the understand. The only way in there, once I got in there, then that was a whole sea of difference because now I was able to transform nothingness. Was nothingness an easy place to sit in? Hell no. Was it easier? Yes. Did it have all that turmoil? No. And a lot of pain and a lot of depth depth. And a lot of memory and a lot of understanding, but it sure as hell didn't have all that activation, didn't have all that fear, didn't have all that sublimation, didn't have all that turmoil. So when we strip away the wrapping, we strip away the layers, we're not left in, you know, in peace and harmony. We're left in the, on the understanding of the core issue that we heal. But you can't get to that healing on that wrapping. And this is the main cause of turmoil in you. This is why if we go back to the beginning, your body responds the way it does. You're, because could you imagine holding all of that experience in your body? You imagine holding it somatically. You imagine holding it physically. You imagine tr your mind trying to make sense of it. Do you understand now why you drop out, why you disconnect, why it's easier? And to see, to be honest, you can do all the shouting you want about being the body, being body. The answer to the pain is in the body. The answer, the answer to the pain is in the body, but it has to be safe. So somebody on Facebook said, makes so much sense, being treated for all sorts of mental health conditions for 20 years. I know. I know. I know. Listen, we hear that time and time and time again. I won't read it, but I just have actually come off um, the call with Leona two minutes ago or before we started this session and somebody was saying that they had been in and out of therapy for over seven years chasing, the, chasing their tail and in four sessions with one hour therapist because they were able to get into the heart of the matter quite quickly um, it transformed that's not an advertisement by the way I'm just I'm just speaking to that I'm just speaking to that that Facebook comment I know it's powerful this stuff's powerful transforms transforms emotional turmoil now that alongside another few bits now this isn't the only thing is second principle am i disunified we go back to the first now we're starting to see why we're disunified who'd want to be unified to that so if you're unified you're going away from here today understanding why you're uni disunified if you've got disease and maybe it's not that bad right you go away from here today, and I know why I'm, and aren't I so normal? And isn't that so right? And isn't there nothing wrong with me? <laughs> and isn't that make perfect sense that my nervous system would respond? Doesn't that make perfect sense that my defense mechanisms would make me do whatever it is, make me eat, make me drink? I don't care what it is. 
Does it make perfect sense? Because wrapping is real and it's a product of a lack of or poor co-regulation or difficult co-regulation, both within the family system or the caregiver system and within the cultural system. Yeah. Feeling powerful, wrapped in a fear of losing connection and approval. Wow, Liz. Yes. Feeling powerful. Powerful at the heart of this is wrapped in fear, wrapped in fear of the loss, wrapped in fear of a loss of approval. So how can you ever stand in your own power? You can do all the confidence workshops you want. You can do all of the flexing and the using your voice. But if you don't unwrap that, you'll never be able to know own powerfulness. And that's a wonderful example. If everybody was following that, that's a wonderful example of where anger is seen as a bad emotion and powerful is seen as a good and powerful in this case, wrapped up in a lot of pain. And that's a wonderful example of not every feeling is bad and not every bad feeling is bad and not every good feeling is good. They can be wrapped individually depending on the experience within the family, within the system, within the culture. Think about all our different cultures. Think about if any of these are therapists. Think about not only, like, not only you, but think about your 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 think about your culture I mean what cultures would we grow up what religious systems would we grow up in what did we hear what I mean yes there we go and Claire now you're talking about the heart of the matter yeah you know I grew up in 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 dairy I mean geez people were fighting for survival I was coming with nothingness you know what what could be done with that there was you know people were actually trying just trying to survive they were trying to get through the day they were trying to put food in the table alongside all of the other transgenerational trauma that you know in ireland so this stuff is not stuff that we just hear and forget about that what are you crying for i'll come over and i'll give you something to cry about the shut up you don't know you're loving there's people worse off than you that's weak there's something wrong with you for feeling that what way are you going on yeah what we're fundamentally saying here is all of that noise all of that story all of that narrative all of those feelings get embedded in the us and we now see that that is within in the same way. So we don't have one feeling. Sometimes we have multiple feelings and those multiple feelings birth when this one feeling that we're trying to get at comes, it all comes together. And then we get a response, which we call emotional turmoil. Does that make sense? Tell me how you're feeling about that. Was that helpful? Who would ever go near anger if the real cost of the loss of love? Who would ever go near anger if the real cost is the loss of love? Nobody. You can see how difficult it was. Good. Chasing your tail. I know. I know how difficult that is. Okay. Has anybody any questions that happen? You can love my cheeks are getting purple or by the minute. That's how you know I'm in. Yes, Linda. No, there's a I don't want you to jump the gun yet, right? Because because tomorrow we're going to assess, right? We're going to assess whether you are entangled. Some some emotions you might be entangled in, some emotions you might have smaller wrapping in. But let's look at it generically. What what wrapping do you have around? generic wrapping do you have around emotion generally do you know 
you know, good emotion is good, bad emotion is bad. What wrapping do you have around it? Because now we can start to have a generic view. Now, what I'll want you to do tomorrow is have a more specific view. What feelings do you have of wrapping around? What feelings cause the most turmoil? Because then we can start, sorry, then we can start to really target that emotional content. Then we can really start when we go to do our plan then we can go to really we can start to really identify where we need to target so that we can so we're not running around you know chasing ghosts that we're being very purposeful very targeted targeting that that's causing the turmoil so we can shrink it does that make sense does that make sense okay brilliant okay anybody any questions so I just want you to think about it just let that percolate in your heart and your mind hopefully nobody's too to activate it, but everybody's okay. Breathe a wee bit with that and see how we go. And we'll come back tomorrow with understanding more wrapping and getting, and then your assessment, and then understanding the third principle and how all of this comes together. Happy enough? Same time. Good, Sharon. I see you doing a wee bit of tapping. You doing a wee bit of regulating. Good. Great. Happy days. Great stuff. Okay, brilliant. Nobody's any questions. Okay, so for those of you that are in the collective, you have your link for the extra coaching, hopefully. Um, so those of you that are in collective, I'll see you on the other side and we can, we can make sense of this inside yourself. Um, so I'll see anybody that's in the collective. Um, if you just go to your own your links that you were given on email, I'll see you inside there. See you tomorrow night, guys. Hopefully that was food for thought. Did that was that helpful? Was that hopeful? Are we starting to have some sort of plan. You see it in your own self. Okay, brilliant. So all the collective guys, you have your link on email. I'll see you. I'll jump right over. I'm going to go and grab a wee cup of tea, and I'll meet you back there. All right. Um, and just to explain, the collective is a group, um, a group of a monthly coaching that we meet together to implement workshops like this. So um, I'll see you in a wee minute over there. Um, okay, nobody's any questions. The fear of losing love. Yes. Yes. Well done. Well done, Michelle. That's a good breakthrough. Great. We're starting to see. Can I just ask one more question? Are you starting to see why you have emotional turmoil? And are you starting to see why it's not a weakness in you? It's not a lack of strength. It's not a lack of power. It's not a lack of knowledge. Are you starting to see it? It's a very uh, detailed system that's at play that is in your unconscious awareness. Brilliant, brilliant, good. That's, that was my intention, intention delivered. Okay, brilliant. All right, I'll see you also. See you tomorrow night, seven o'clock, same time. Brilliant. All right, Anne. See you over in. Uh, see you over in the the collective call. All right. See you in a wee minute. Bye. 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 Bye.